What up, folks? I'm a crazy mofo today, and my name is Clay. So, here's the story. So about three weeks ago, I bought a PT Cruiser for $450. The lady said it overheated and took it to the shop. I changed the thermostat. I put in coolant and burped it out correctly. Well, it stopped overheating until I decided to drive it to Texas. It was doing just fine for the last two weeks. My grandmother is in her 90s and she just moved in with my aunt, which is her daughter, because she was no longer to take care, able to take care of herself. She's, she's, a, she's a trooper. And I'm afraid that, you know, this might be one of the last times that she's gonna be able to be seen. And I wanna take my boys, Colin, and Cameron back there, which is the show producer, as you guys know. Well, I drove the car about 1,500 miles and I didn't have any trouble with the thing overheating. And it wasn't losing any coolant, so I decided that the car would be good enough and it's the most economical car we have, plus I sold my Jeep, so it's the only car I have. Well, we got about 250 miles into our trip and the gauge started raising up. Needless to say, Yesterday, before I left, it started leaking coolant, which looked like it was leaking from the water pump, and I was supposed to leave yesterday. So I put a new water pump and a timing belt in it. Then I pressurized the system before putting the covers back on. No leaks. But then today, 250 miles into our trip, we got a leak. This is not a good thing, but here's what we did. We stopped, we had some lunch, and we were talking about it. If it's just a leak and not a blown head gasket, then all we have to do is keep coolant in it. So I put some coolant in it and we're driving south. We were gonna turn around and go back and you think, well, the expense of getting it back home, this is a $500 car. And even though I would prefer to keep the car, if we had to leave it on the side of the road, it's probably not the end of the world. But. We thought about it. We had already planned out being gone for a week. So if we break down and we're an extra day away from home, whatever. Right now we've got a pool of coolant and it's staying in the halfway spot. But will we make it to Texas and back in this thing? Personally, I don't care if we make it back. I just care if we make it there. I'd love to see her. I want the boys to see her. These aren't boys. These are pretty much damn near men. And you know how it is when your kids get older, they won't go anywhere with you. So check in, see if we make it all the way to Texas or not. There's what we got so far. We're staying right in the middle. It should be a little bit under the middle. We definitely have our fingers crossed today. Well, she's getting a little bit higher than the middle, which is where we need to be. So we're gonna stop at the auto parts store and pick up some stop leak or something and retouch off the coolant. Obviously, we haven't went that far but we can't have it sitting there overheating like that all the way to Texas. You see it's raising up. We don't want that. If it raises up and goes down, that means we got a pocket of air when coolant's not touching the temperature sensor. So we need to pull over and put some oil in, or some coolant inside it and make sure it's good. So the car cooled down to halfway again. I don't know how much further I can go touching cloth the way I am before I totally lose something. When your temperature gauge fluctuates up and down, that means you have a void in your coolant. And as you can tell by looking here, we've obviously had a leak in here. I thought the leak was fixed yesterday when I put the timing belt and the head gasket on this stupid thing, but apparently it has a leak somewhere else. The water pump was really, really tight, and I believed the bearings to be bad, but that might have been from the stress and the strain of whatever's going on inside this engine, which could be a water leak of some sort. Now, anytime you remove your radiator cap, I don't recommend removing it while it's hot, but if you're gonna do it while it's hot, it usually has two stages. You just wanna turn it a little hair, and then listen, and see if you can hear air, and then turn it just a hair more. Now we got coolant bubbling out of there, but what we want is we want that air to escape out of there. So we've got to wait a couple moments for that to cool down enough to where we're not blowing coolant out everywhere. By allowing that pressure to recede, after a short period of time, once you stop hearing the air, you should be able to open this up. You still want to make sure 
that it doesn't blow up in your face. Now, that looks like poo poo butter. Make sure you shake the contents of the poo poo butter first. I went in and bought a second bottle just in case to make sure it was done right. Well, when you have it shook up correctly, it should look just like this, and it shouldn't look like poo poo butter any longer. Them thick chunks are what makes it work. Woo, I got all of it in there. Barely, boys, barely. If you're gonna ever drive a car that is overheating, these radiator caps have two-step process. One click, then two clicks. And in this particular situation, the radiator cap will end straight with this right here. If we needed to drive it a long distance, we would leave it on just about one click so you would put it on, that's on, and it's not held down to anything, come up real easy. Then we would go to one click right here. That allows the air to escape, but not as much water. You're gonna have water escape during that process, but that'll allow you to drive a vehicle, say 10 to 15 miles with a really significantly bad head gasket, and you could drive it even further as long as you have enough water to keep it in there. You don't always have to put coolant in a cooling system you can use regular water just don't do it as a lifestyle because it's not good conditioning for the block or the engine or the head gaskets or anything else because coolant actually has conditioners inside it now let's say i want to drive this one really far and i want it to be right well this is locked i can't turn it any further if i wanted to leave it loose just a little bit that should allow more air to escape out of there now we're gonna hop in the car, drive it down the road, and sure as the hell hope we get really far. Now we've put the miracle in a can inside there. We've got 203 miles. We're gonna drive it a little while and see if it helps. Now it's not gonna miraculously start working, folks. We have to let the vehicle engine run up to operating temperature for about five miles or so, or five minutes. Then shut the vehicle off, let it cool down, and repeat. Hopefully it's not for the bad because I know these boys are really excited about seeing their grandmother. Actually, they want to go see their uncle that has a super toy comic book collection, but I think they're gonna love seeing their grandmother too. I know I am. Now, we drove about 10 miles and it's still getting a little bit warm, obviously. So we're gonna pull over here, let it cool down and top off our cooling system oh yeah she definitely hot she definitely definitely hot okay the universe says no thanksgiving for clay colin cameron today we're gonna turn around and go home if we can make it there without warping these heads and make it home all we have to really do is get within 200 miles of home and we'll be okay because then we can call triple a damn i'd be making rhymes every day i thing, my name is clay Seems as if the head gasket is just too far gone, so this is closed. We're gonna open it up to the first click, probably about a quarter way. Air can hopefully escape. So we're at about 230 miles, and uh, we're gonna see if we can make it back home 400 miles. Once again, touching cloth, got my fingers crossed that we'll make it. Well, needless to say, if we would have been closer to home, we might have made it keeping the cap loose and stuff like that, we could have probably strung it along for a couple hours and got it back a good 60, 70 miles, I would guess. Luckily, I have a great wife that knows enough about tow bar and the stuff that I need to be able to take the front bumper cover off of this and put the tow bar on the front of it, haul it back home a couple hundred miles. If you guys don't know how to do that, look at my tow bar video, it's excellent and It'll show you exactly how we're going to haul this thing all the way home. Hopefully this information in here helps you folks. Unfortunately, no grandma this year. What can you do? At least we'll all be together for Thanksgiving, even if we're in a motel room. Remember, if anybody else can do it, you can do it too. God bless folks. Have a better day than Clay.